What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the One A Day Vlogs over here on the Weston Smith channel. It is Thursday, May 21st. Man, there's so much new stuff that I need to show you guys and uh, gear that we need to kind of clean up. Like, frankly, I'm in the garage just trying to organize stuff. I mean, we got some new working class Zero Citizens that I want to rig up for you guys. We got some of that Mendit stuff. Uh, this is that soft bait plastic glue so you can fix your baits if they're kind of destroyed, which we've showcased in a couple of previous vlogs, but now you know what we've got. Uh, we picked it up from Shields. I think they sell it at Academy. You can get it online at Amazon. That's like a half ounce bottle, but it lasts uh, quite a while. We bought a new Shimano yesterday, a $30 Sienna. This is a spinning combo. Y'all know our spinning reel got stolen. Our, our combo, we left it a pond and went back for it and it was gone. Um, so it's like really our fault, but anyways, we got a new Shimano spinning reel, man. 30 bucks. Like this thing has got to be legit. And we're going to put that on one of the uh, Guggen spinning rods. I've never used one of the Guggen um, spinning rods. It's uh, one of their prototypes, so I don't believe this is an actual production model, but we're going to rig it up. Then we've also got our new Carl's Bait and Tackle order. Uh, I'm going to show you guys exactly what we got in there, and I'm just going to make it quick. And dude, just a lot of stuff going on today. <laughs> and I figured I would show you some of this. Look at this chaos. I'm just trying to organize our tackle backpack just gets uh, so unorganized. Anyways, let's bring you along for today's festivities, y'all. Okay, <laughs> y'all would not believe. Well, you would believe if you saw my Instagram story because I posted the fact that I just filmed this. So this is the second time I'm filming this. I uh, forgot to hit the record button. The camera was sitting here. I did a 10 minute segment. Yeah, so anyways, guys, here's the new reel. Yeah, 30 bucks, man. We just picked up this Shimano 2500 HG Sienna. It was 30 bucks at Fun and Sun whenever we picked our boat back up, so we had to get a spinning reel. We lost our other one recently. I feel like there was so much stuff I just told you guys that I've got to remember to say again, so. Anyways, let's just do the reboxing of the unboxing. We got two baby bull shads, man, and gizzard shad. Check that out. You guys are always selling these out on Carl's Bait and Tackle, so when I saw them, I had to get two because they're freaking delicious. And the bass be munching, but I'm only seeing you guys throw them in videos because we've never gotten a hold of them. We also got some new wacky rig hooks. You could also use these for drop shots. That's probably what I'll use them for more frequently. But now I'll throw the wacky rigs again since we got a spinning setup. A lot of you guys complain that we don't throw the spinning combos. Hey, it's what it is. Throwing a wacky rig on a bait caster is dangerous because for one, it's very light. You know, you could get a bird's nest just because of that. But a lot of times you'll cast and those worms, those Sankos will just break off the hook. I mean, I used to like, I used to go through so many Yamamoto worms and just cast them off whenever I would. And anyways, the whole point is that your bait caster is going to backlash. So it's much easier to throw a wacky rig on a spinning combo, which is what you're supposed to do anyways. And now we've got a new spinning reel. Flipping weights. So we've got some new flipping weights. Three pack. Twist lock owner beast hooks, man, but these are not belly weighted, so this is new. These are unweighted, and I'm gonna throw some saucy swimmers on here, probably the big 4.8 inch. Just creep them a little bit slower. When you got that weight on there, you gotta work them a little bit faster. I could work this closer to the surface, getting through some grass. It's gonna be a fun time. Beast owner hooks. We also got some new Ned rig hooks. I've never bought these before, but these are going to, uh, I think, really keep those rattling Neds on the hook very well. It's just got that big locking piece that's gonna bury itself into that plastic. I don't think the rattling Neds are gonna come off there very easy. Gotta just try some new stuff. We have two of the same Guggen Squad, Rotten Pumpkin, 4 ot hook, Grass Hero Swim Jig. I've been throwing them like crazy, man. I just can't get enough. And then we got these scrounger head hooks that we're gonna use uh, some flukes on. We really got them for striper, but yeah, I got half ounce and then one ounce. So we just reboxed the unboxing that we did twice now. Let's go ahead and put this uh, reel on the rod, shall we? This, this click is so satisfying. I could honestly just, I could just do this all day. I really like the click. I didn't like it at first, but it, uh, it definitely grows on you. Oh yeah, you hear that pop? Oh yeah. She's locked. This is just a prototype, but you got your little hook holder right here. Oh yeah, we are ready to rock and roll. Okay, I gotta get some line on here. All right, let's get to rigging these citizen baits up now, man. Mike recommends rigging them up with a six aught beast owner hook, the weighted belly ones. But we have uh, we have an eight aught. So check this out. So the eight aught we've rigged in one of the other ones, and it actually worked out pretty good. It still fits in that little chamber right there where it's supposed to. So it's like very flush mounted and still just as snagless as he uh, says. So this is a 3 8 ounce. I believe if you get the 6 aught, it's a quarter ounce. So you can work this guy a little bit faster and he'll still sink a little bit faster. I mean, not by much, but this is a slightly bigger hook, slightly more weight. It gives you the opportunity to maybe swim them a little faster. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go straight into the nose of this guy right here with this beast owner hook. I mean, just like right smack dab in the middle of the eyes, the mouth, that just goes 
boom. All right, we're just going right down the middle, you guys. And you wanna get it like locked. Like I go all the way. Like once it's in that right orientation, I cannot rotate it anymore. Like if I did another circle, I'd be like getting buried into the nose. It's gonna fit flawlessly just like the six thoughts. And what you do, what you do is you put your finger on the back, right where that hook comes up. That's where you want to exit the bait. You put your finger right there for measurement. Otherwise the hook could come out like way up here and it would be stretching the bait. Or it could come out way back here and it could be scrunching the bait. Does that make sense? I'm pushing this hook now into the bait. I'm getting it into the air pocket. Now the, you can see the hook through there almost. I believe you can see that guys. The hook is now in the body, which makes the second step easier. If you were to try and do this like with the hook outside, it gets a little squiggly. So right here at the tip of my fingernail is where I want to feel the hook come out of the body. So I'm going to bend this guy forwards like this. And right where my fingernail is at, I want to feel that hook. And now I'm just going to double check before I bring it through that I'm right in the middle of the bait. I might be a little off center to the left, but let's just go ahead and push it through. I think we're looking pretty good here. Yeah, we pushed it through and it looks, maybe it's slightly off center, but other than that, I mean, it's flawless. That thing, I think that's good to go. You can see that belly weight fits right there in that pocket. That way this thing just creeps through the grass. I mean, you can't hardly even get snagged. Now, the one thing they recommend to do is to bend the hook up just a little bit. And ideally you would have done this beforehand and I should have, but I just forgot. So let's do that now. So what I'm gonna do, this bait has an air pocket, right? So when these fish come up and smack these big old citizen baits, they are gonna push that air pocket down it the whole bait collapses and they're gonna get that hook. You see what I'm saying? They're gonna munch it and then I'm not gonna demonstrate because that would suck. I'm gonna grab the hook right at the bend and, th and this takes a little bit of force. I'm gonna bend it up ever so slightly. We just want a slight bend up. That way you'll get uh, a few more hook sets and miss maybe a couple more fish over time. That's the idea. If we did, that's exactly what you want. I mean, it's like so subtle. That is how you rig a working class zero citizen bait. So here's a seven. This is the green pumpkin color. I think I'm gonna take that off and tie on the six. And I'm gonna test this color out here. See now on our seven, you can see I definitely bent the hook up a little bit more. See what I'm saying? I don't even know if I bent this one at this point. And that's gonna help you miss less fish. I'm gonna take my hoodie off because it is getting to be like 80 degrees and humid. I've been inside all day just editing in the AC and I've been kind of cold, but no longer. All right guys, so bringing up the new Shimano, here's what we're doing. I found some 17 pound Guggen Squad fluorocarbon. I just did a little bit of a backing. You can maybe see there, I've just got enough going around the spool once and I'm gonna tighten it up a little bit. The point in this is that you've got that more stickier like mono or fluoro line attached to the spool so that if you catch a really big one, you don't get that slip. Sometimes if you just go straight braid to these reels, uh, you'll get that slip if you get a big fish and then there's just no way of bringing it in. So just a little bit of a backing, I used a double uni knot. I was gonna kind of show you guys that right there. It's just essentially a uni knot and then another uni knot and you tie them and then you can cinch it down. So I've always just used the double uni knot as my leader knot and so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down. Then I'm gonna continue cranking that braid and spool this whole thing up and then I'm just gonna tie this double uni knot again with some 12 pound fluorocarbon as the leader that we'll use to fish our baits with. So guys, we were actually just spooling this with some moss green uh, braid that we received in a mystery tackle box, y'all. So guys, here's one of those Guggen Squad frogs we just unboxed in the last unboxing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the legs down because it helps them walk better. So I'm gonna trim like an inch and a half or so off of this guy right here. Specifically on those walking style frogs, where's a popper? On these uh, popping frogs, I don't know if it makes that much of a difference, it might just be preference, but specifically on the walking frogs with that pointed nose right there where you're, where you're walking them, it's much easier with the legs trimmed a little bit shorter and I got one extra limb. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I trimmed the legs down. Dang guys, we are literally almost finished. I think we spent like two hours in this freaking garage already. Anyways, we have a big mistake. Check this out. This is a top order that came in one of our recent uh, unboxings as well as this guy, um, the top notch. Just different like style whopper ploppers. Really interesting. We're gonna put these things to use pretty soon. So I wanted to point those out to you guys. Man, we finally made it out of the house and uh, holy soreness. I did like the first, I think I mentioned yesterday, just Devin and I went to a CrossFit class because our box opened back up and holy smokes, we are sore. But check us out. We are getting rid of the uh, Minn Kota Maxim 70, man. We put the new trolling motor on the boat. Whether you guys have seen that video or not yet, I'm not sure, but look at uh, who's picking it up from us. He has got a dope. Nissan truck with this bass tracker and he just wants a trolling motor upgrade. I'm gonna see if I can't uh, find out where he's at. Have our trolling motor on, it's a happy way to a new owner. Dude, that's a beast of a setup. Digging it. All right, which building am I going into? Quick pit stop, ha, you probably already knew. 
John was a cool dude, man. Uh, I think he's gonna love that motor. We are on our way to a little fishing spot right down the road since we are in East Plano and don't get out this way too often, at least this far over. So hop, skip, and a jump over to a pond we just found on Fish Brain. There's a lot of water right here. I mean, there's so many options. Hopefully we picked the right one. That's all I got to say. I think it's an 8.5 rating on the Bass Forecast app, meaning the bite should be hot today, although the prime times for the bite was like earlier at noon. It's now 5 p.m. and then of course sunset's probably gonna be hot. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm thinking we're gonna catch some fish. We are here, man. First stop. I don't know about you, but I am ready to see how this Shimano reel works for 30 bucks. Cheapest Shimano I've ever owned by like a fair amount. See how the same fares. Looks like the perfect spot to break in a little new reel with a lunker log. I'm gonna throw the frog in this grass for a second and see if anything hits like mid afternoon. Oh, he's looking at it. You see him? Do you have polarized glasses? Yeah. He's looking at it. Oh my god, it's like a two pounder. Yep, lunker log. I think he sees us. Okay. Oh, got one. Oh, first one on the new reel. Drag screaming. It's not tight enough. Lunker log. Oh. Dang it. Here, throw this. Catch one on the new reel. I'm gonna use the frog for just a second. Though. <laughs> Frogfish, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, midday. Look at him shimmer and shine. He's got such a cool color. Blending in with the grass. <laughs> that was kind of a the perfect delay for the hook set because it like kind of scared me so I didn't do anything for a second. And then I was like, oh, set the hook. <laughs> oh, midday frogging. You can't really beat that. A plump little fat dude. Come on. All right. I think we can get... Oh, gosh, dang. You are... a uh, Fierce one. Are you gonna make it? Oh, he's he knows what he's doing. Wow, smoked it right when we got to the opening. That was dope. That might be a bed right there. If that's the case, I'm gonna try and get some all the way around this thing. This might be cool. Gotcha. On the new, on the new, on this $30 Shimano. I don't know what it is. <laughs> He's in the grass. I still don't quite know. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like a two pounder. Okay, okay. Wait, wait, did you, you didn't unhook yourself. Come back. Look, get it on that new $30 Shimano. Check that out. In the new pond. Going out? Yeah. Bye, bud. <laughs> insane insane i just saw a hole in the grass right here and i was like i'm gonna I'm, i was like i'm gonna just pitch it right there and then i'm gonna work it through this opening and as soon as it touched the water he just pounced at it now that was a that was insane right there did y'all i hope the angle yeah the angle caught that wow that just goes to show you gotta hit all these little holes man these things are lurking. Oh. oh, dang it. Gotcha. Tighten this drag. This drag on this pole was so loose. I guess I was lo loosening it. It's in the grass. What is happening? Oh, it's a turtle. I don't know what it is. Oh man. No, it's a fish. <laughs> I thought it was a turtle. Oh my God, this fish is in so much grass. Now I had no idea how to set that drag. Oh my God, it seemed like my first day 
using a freaking spinning reel. I guess I haven't used one in so long. All right, hold on a second. There we go, got you unhooked. That was crazy. This guy has got some weird shape going on. He's like a little hunchback. I'm not gonna lie, that was a fun catch. We'll call you the hunchback of Notre Dame. All right, bye bud. Sweet. Gotcha! <laughs> Just as soon as I tell Weston. <laughs> I'm like, we gotta go! We gotta go, the place we need to go to. Hold on, where are you going? It's about to close. They fight so much harder on these like little bitty rods and reels. That ties it up. Your girl got three, Weston got three. I'd say that was a pretty successful uh, little hour long pond we've never fished. Little session just because the bite rating was good and we're out running errands trying to get stuff done. Bye bud. That wacky rig is the way to go. New reel all the way. All right, y'all, back to the truck. Thank you so much for joining in on today's mainly informational video with a little bit of fish in there at the end. We crushed it, dude. Top water frog midday. You can't have too much more fun, but look, when you see a pond like this with grass like that, and you know it's kind of around the spawn, it could be pre and post in some of these areas, dude, you have to throw a frog. I mean, those things were probably up shallow. I saw the one looking like it was making a bed. I'm telling you what, dudes, you gotta get in there with the frog. They're hiding under that grass under the midday heat, and you can snag them, dudes. I think I had five, six, I'll go as far as to say seven blow-ups and caught three fish. I think that's probably what happened. Devin broke in that new reel. I started to throw it after uh, tossing that SLX DC for a minute, the bait caster I was using. And uh, I, it does feel like a $30 reel, but I'll tell you, buy it. Like literally, like for the money, 30 bucks for a Shimano, that Sierra, go get it. Don't worry about the gear ratio too much. I think that's the HG, but it might not. I, just, just grab that reel. Tell you what, it does perform. Again, we did 17 pound fluorocarbon, which doesn't matter. We just did we just did a little bit of a backing of fluorocarbon. You could use monofilament. Then we did the main line, the majority of the line, braid. And then we did the leader. That last bit was like 12 pound monofilament because I didn't have any really light fluorocarbon and we wanted to use lighter line for that spinning setup so we can really use some finesse lures and get in front of some fish's face that will bite when they're acting really finicky. That's how you got to do it, man. So we had a ton of fun breaking in new equipment. Once again, thank you guys for joining on to our once a day vlogs. Let's catch you tomorrow. <coughs>